Hi, it's Jessie. Today I'm drinking some high calf palm berry tea from the Republic of Tea. Okay, just it's from the Republic of Tea. I don't have a formal review for this, but I do like it because I like some high caffeinated tea. And it tastes good. It tastes much better hot than it does. Alright, so for today's video, I'm going to do my series review of the my uh, Song of the Lioness Quartet, Quartet by Tamara, Tamara, Tamara Pierce. Uh, excuse me for the dishwasher running. I was going to wait until it finished, but it's taking too long, so I'm gonna record in the time I have to record. Um, so this is my first experience with Tamara Pierce. I missed her as a kid somehow. I just never picked up any of her books, and I realized that she's more geared towards middle grade young adult. Um, but some friends of mine said that she's actually really good, even if she stands up today, so I figured I'd give her a chance because I love checking out series that I missed as a kid and seeing how they fare for an adult. Maybe something, you know, I'll recommend to my kids someday. Um, so this is The Song of the Lioness. It's the first series within her Tortle universe. Uh, which is one of the worlds that she writes in and this one specifically follows Alana, a young girl named Alana whose brother is named Tom um, it's Wheel of Time names, classic fantasy names um, coming in there, but Alana is a young girl and in Tortal only men become knights and she wants to become a knight and her younger brother, who, her, her twin brother who is supposed to be sent off to train as a knight doesn't want to be one so she disguises herself as a man, Alan uh, to be trained as a knight. I do have to say I confess a little bit of confusion in the choice that they didn't just switch places. Like, Tom is still Tom. Tom can go and chain in magic like he wants to. She has to be a Anyway. Um, but she goes to train to be a knight, and so this is her becoming a knight and then her adventures as a knight. Uh, it's, it's nice to have a fantasy series with a very simple synopsis for once. Let's just quickly jump into the ratings then because I've already talked about the series as I as much as I need to. Characters here were seven. And I feel like maybe that was generous because now I'm like thinking about it. This is one of the series like it's just not gonna really stick with me, I gotta be honest. If I read it as a kid it probably would, but now it's kinda like eh already. Um so I finished this like a week and a half, two weeks ago and it's already starting to fade. So um bear with me. But characters were seven. Let me think. Uh, they were just kind of typical fantasy characters. They were very the only one that really gets developed is Alana, and honestly, she's a little inconsistent sometimes. Um, the villains are very shallow villains that are doing villainy for villainy's sake. Uh, but some of our friends really get some interesting characterizations. So she has several friends throughout the series, and those are all really interesting. There's just not a lot of like character growth. There isn't a lot of anything. So I gave it seven because as much as I would like to shift the norm to be more 50%, for me, an average book is three stars, so seven is a 3.5. I think it's a little bit above average, so a six would be average for me because that five, six split. Seven is a little above average. I do think the characters are, aren't are just stereotypes, right? There, um, There is some creativity used in kind of thinking outside the box. One of my favorite things with Alana is that even though she is a girl that wants to do a traditionally male job, she still keeps her femininity throughout it. There are moments where she embraces that, and so that's, I think, part of why I gave it a little more credit there, because I think that was fantastic. But also, I really do like her friends. They're fun, they're interesting, and of course, gut aging this on a younger audience, I expect a little less. So that's why this is 7 out of 10 for the characters. Plot is also a 7 out of 10. The plot wavers. Um, my biggest problem with the plot, and is just that there are a lot of plot points that are either completely dropped or just picked up out of nowhere. So I can't, I don't want to get into specifics to keep this spoiler free, but there are definitely elements of like, hey, this was introduced in the first book and then just never addressed again. Um, or things that like wasn't, it was, wasn't a problem in book two, but suddenly it's a problem in book four, you know? So there were those kind of things that sometimes bothered me, but for the most part, it was pretty good. I liked the overarching story that goes through there. I really liked the journey that Alana went on. Um, so overall, I thought it was pretty good. Not perfect by any means, but I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was interesting. 
Going on the setting here, I gave the set setting 6 out of 10, so again, this is where it's like hitting that average mark because it's, it's fantasy England, um, fantasy Europe. There's some elements of other cultures, but it's cultures used in kind of a very stereotypical, like there's the exotic desert dwelling culture and there's the slightly barbaric mountainous peoples. So there's like, it, it's a very typical fantasy setting, which is why it gets that six. I do think there's some fun stuff done with it, like the fact that there are these strict gender dynamics that are explored in some interesting ways. And the other thing I do like is the kind of history in the of the world is kind of built a little bit more than I would expect normally from this kind of just fun romp of a fantasy. And the other thing that kind of gives it a little bit of points to me is there is some interesting religious stuff that gets into and like who people worship and why is kind of fascinating. And to be quite honest, like disparate religion, so like a fantasy world where everybody doesn't just blindly believe all the same things is something that I do find very fascinating. So I will give points to a fantasy for that. But at the end of the day, it's a pretty average fantasy setting. It's, it's Europe, but with magic, so. Uh, so my general appeal here was a six. So like I said, I think this is a pretty average series. Um, this is in my opinion, right? Like this is, if I had picked this up when I was 12, I might have really liked it. And I am going to talk about when I get to the writing style, some issues I have. But if I had picked it up when I was younger, I probably would have really, really liked it. Now that I'm more experienced in fantasy and I'm clearly not the audience for this, I don't like it quite as much. But I do think it's a solid, average, fun fantasy. It's not anything that's making me think deep or reevaluate the way I see the world, but it's fun and that's good sometimes and I actually kind of needed it before I got into all the spooky stuff because I've been reading a lot of really heavy books. So this was a nice, calm, relaxing book to read, series to read, when I needed a break from the heavier stuff. You know, this was a break between, what was I reading before House of Leaves? Because I read House of Leaves after that and I forget what I was be reading before it. I don't know. Oh, it was like a heavy nonfiction. I think it was, um, why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria, school cafeteria? Just in the cafeteria. Um, so it was a nice little, like, relaxing series to read in between those kind of heavier things. With that said, let's get into the writing. So the writing I gave a 4 out of 10. So this is, like, below average. The main reason for this, I mean, so, like, it's, it's... It's a fine writing. Like, there's nothing special about it. There's nothing memorable about it. There weren't any lines. I think I highlighted maybe one thing. There weren't any lines that stuck out to me and were like, wow, that was really pretty. It was fine. It did the job. But the particular thing that bothered me about it is that as the series progress progresses, the audience ages. And, like, I don't mean as in, like, Tamora Pierce did a good job keeping up with her audience because it took her time to publish the books. Like, the first book I would say is very clearly geared towards like 10 to 11 year olds, maybe a little younger even, 9 year olds. But yeah, very clearly middle grade. By the end of the series, it is definitely young adult and like I would say good medium young adult. Like I would say the series goes from like I would read it at 9 to be like eh, this is probably for like a 16 year old, right? Like the themes evolve, uh, Alana's responsibilities change, her, she gets older, um, the things she's dealing with get more mature as she goes on becomes to experiment things with like romantic relationships and stuff that like in ways that don't appeal to like children. Um, you know, like there was like crushes and then it went on to like full on romance or y things like that, right? The pressures of getting married, which are very typical YA things, but the writing style stayed very middle grade. And this just really bugged me because it was like, I feel like if I had read this book when I was nine, right, the first book would have really hit it off with me if I had read it when I was nine. If I had read the rest of the series when I was nine, I could have gotten along with it, but like I feel like it's the kind of thing like I don't know if I would give it to a nine year old because like she's talking about her period, which is more like getting into that 11, 12, 13 age, and then she's, you know, talking about wanting to have sex with boys, and I'm like that's closer to that like 13, 14, 15 range, you know? Um, and so I think the themes don't necessarily fit that, but the writing style stays very middle grade. And I know this is a problem for me with a lot of the series I read as a kid, is that I aged out of them because I got bored with the writing style. So like the Sisters Grimm's, Grimm is probably a good ex the best example I have of this, which is that I absolutely loved it when I was younger. 
And then I got to a certain point where the writing style bored me. And that's where like I was having trouble engaging with this because it just felt like we didn't dive into anything deeply enough. And that's, I'm gonna put on the writing style specifically, not necessarily on other elements, okay? Does that make sense? I feel like that makes sense, all right. Um, next, the originality here, I gave it a six out of 10. I do think this is a very typical plot today and this is one of those things where like, this is an older fantasy, so it wasn't setting the bar, but girl pretends to be a boy to do a typically masculine thing is pretty typical. Uh, it does use a lot of like classic fantasy cliches and tropes and you know some elements that are maybe not so good like white savior stuff or you know does come up a lot but there are some elements of it where I think she does it in interesting ways like the fact that Alana is still feminine that's relatively new in this kind of story or um, how she handles there is a love triangle square there is a love triangle at one point and I think it's handled really well actually persists through most of the series and it's handled really well and in a really interesting way that lets this is actually something I'm gonna mention this one of the things I like the most about this is the fact that like Alana is allowed to have multiple relations and the narrative and the characters don't shame her for it like there's like one person that like calls her a slut or something and it's very clearly a villain like so I do really, really love that. So those are the elements that I think are a little taking those tropes and twisting them in an interesting way. But at the end of the day, this is pretty typical classic fantasy. So it's not the most exciting or new, but again, it was really fun. And then finally, we're gonna end up here with the ending again. If you are not interested in this, you can go ahead and skip ahead. There's timestamps in the description, chapters in the bar there. If you wanna skip ahead to just my final thought, because I'm gonna talk about the ending here not full spoilers just to set expectations um the ending i gave an 8 out of 10 and the reason the ending is so high is because tamora pierce is not afraid to kill her characters and i love that i actually this will probably go which will go up first if i haven't posted it i'm posting soon a video of uh characters that i think should have died in wheel of time because one of my biggest problems with wheel of time is how reluctant jordan was to kill his character and I was really surprised in a book that like bridges that uh, in a book series that bridges that middle game grade to YA um, gap to see that many deaths at the end. That's pretty typical of YA is you get like one character they kill to, enough to be like, oh yes, we're willing to kill characters but not actually have any impact. So that was one thing I liked about it. Um, I do think it was very satisfying. It surprised me a little bit some of the choices that it made. It did have a few callbacks to some previous dilemmas that Alana had faced, so I liked that. Um, there was a little bit of a contrivance ex machina type thing, but that doesn't really bother me um, nine times out of ten, especially because in this case I think it was kind of, it was set up well um, and was a nice conclusion to Alana's story. It made sense for this to be the thing she had to overcome in order to win. My one, like, major reason this isn't higher as an ending, because it was surprisingly good, was it does that whole pair of the spares thing where just about everyone ends up in a relationship and it was more than necessary. I mean, like, they all made sense. Like, it wasn't like anybody, like, nobody really felt paired up just to be paired up, but they definitely were. Like, you know the difference between, like, I don't know, you can like tell like while she Tamora Pierce did a good job establishing the relationships, they weren't necessary, if that makes sense. So that's one of my complaints there. But overall, this book was pretty good. I did not write down my final rating. Why did I give me a minute? I did this with live ship traders too. So this was a six point something out of ten. Uh six point two six out of ten or uh, 3 point and 13 hundredths, let me get my math teacher on, uh, 3.13 out of 5, so a little above average. Um, I think it's fun. I think that's kind of my summary here is if you want a fun, light, quick fantasy series to go through, I would recommend this because that's exactly what this is. Um, I will definitely revisit Tamora Pierce. I was told Tortle is where to start, so I'm going to keep working through it, but not immediately. Like, I think that's going to be the next time that I need a nice moment of like, hey, I've been reading a lot of heavy epic fantasy. Let me do something a little more relaxing. I think that'll be what it, uh, I pick up because she's 
it's definitely fun and I love supporting, you know, reading classic fantasy from somebody other than an old white dude. Um, so with that in mind, let me know below if you are a fan of Tamora Pierce, what you think of Tamora Pierce, but also let me know if you have any recommendations for fa classic fantasy like this that I maybe missed. Now I do know Margaret Weiss, Tracy Hickman are pretty classic. Um, I have read some Margaret Weiss, I think. Um, and the other author I've read some of that I cannot think of her name right now. Anyway, so I have read some, but like if you know any like some classic fantasy, classic fantasy from a not an old white man. So like, don't give me, obviously I've read Robert Jordan, but don't give me Tolkien, Jordan, I don't want to hear it. I want classic fantasy from somebody other than a white dude. Leave your recommendations in the comments because I do want to read some of that stuff that I maybe missed as a kid. Um, not necessarily for kids, but like stuff that like my small town high school library probably didn't stock because it wasn't getting as much attention, if that makes sense. Um, and that's it for me right now. I will see y'all next time. Bye.